we have examined perfect competition in great detail where you have very large number of very small sellers now consider the other extreme that is you look at the situation of one seller and when you have one seller in the market there's no one like you in the sense the product you sell no one else sells and that's why you are the sole seller of this product a situation like this is called monopoly and consider the following when you have perfect competition different sellers sell exactly the same product or in a way they the products sold by different sellers under perfect competition are perfect substitutes of one another when you are under monopoly you are selling something unique or different from rest of the other sellers or in other words there are no close substitutes available for your product and that is why you have a monopoly now let us examine the conditions which will give rise to a monopoly like situation or you will just have one seller in the market and one of the reasons why this may happen is because of ownership of unique resources talents or skill for example if you are able to sing like elvis presley you'll be one of a kind and so you have ownership of a particular skill or a talent another possibility is if you find say some kind of deposits in your backyard like oil deposits or something like that again you'll have ownership of unique resources and that will give rise to a monopoly like situation another reason as to why we may have monopoly like situation is the size of the market is not very large in relation to the optimal level of output that can be produced by a firm consider the following example in a small town that i live in it has a population of about 25000 people and to serve 25000 people we have just have one walmart and not two walmarts or one walmart or kmart and the reason is one giant store is enough to satisfy the entire market for 25000 people so this becomes another reason as to why we may have monopoly like situation the third reason is because of government rules and regulations and the government may decide to give exclusive rights of production of a product or service to one firm and if it gives and this could be done through license or through patent laws and things like that and that will give an exclusive right of production to just one firm so these are some of the reasons as to why we may have monopoly like situation now when you have monopoly it is an example of less than perfect competition and that means the firm or the monopolist will have some control over the price in fact the demand for this product will be completely cornered by the monopolist and what is the demand behavior of consumers they tend to buy more at a lower price and less at a higher price so the demand curve for this product that the monopolist is selling must be downward sloping in terms of this diagram where we have output or q on the horizontal axis and financial variables on the vertical axis what i have drawn is this blue line represents the demand curve that is being cornered by the single seller or the monopolist and demand curve is the same thing as average revenue curve and since average revenue is declining that means marginal must be less than average at all levels of output so based on that i have drawn the marginal revenue curve this is represented by the green line and as you can see this is below the ar curve now apart from the ar curve and the mr curve what i have done here is 
brought in the marginal cost curve and the average total cost curve. And what we are trying to figure out is short-run equilibrium for a firm under monopoly. And essentially what we have to do is find out the output level which will maximize total profits for the monopolist. Now, we already know about the conditions for equilibrium or that, that is, how do we determine the output level that will maximize total profit under any market condition? And there are only two conditions. One, marginal revenue must equal marginal cost. And then number two, marginal cost curve must intersect the MR curve from below. And so the green line is the MR curve. The red curve is the MC curve. So this must be the point of equilibrium. Let's call this E. And based off this equilibrium, we can drop this point to the horizontal axis. And what we have determined is equilibrium level of output that will be produced by the monopolist. Now, what price will be charged by this monopolist? What we have to do is take this equilibrium point to the AR curve and then bring it to the vertical axis. And on the vertical axis, we have financial variables. So here, this will be the price charged by the monopolist. This is how we figure out the equilibrium point that is given by these two conditions here. And, and you drop this point, equilibrium point, to the horizontal axis. You have determined how much output will be produced by this monopolist. Take this point to the AR curve and bring it to the vertical axis. And what you have determined is the price that will be charged by the monopolist. Here is the same diagram. The only difference is the equilibrium point. I've labeled this as A, and this is given by the intersection of MR and MC. And you have this equilibrium level of output that will be produced by the monopolist. And how much will be the price charged by the monopolist? It will be this vertical distance OD. Now, let us do the calculations we had done for a firm under perfect competition, that is, try to determine what will be the total cost of production, what will be the total revenue, and what will be the total profits for this monopolist who produces OQ units of output and charges a price OD units. Now, to figure out total cost, what we have to do is first figure out what will be average total cost. And what will be average total cost of producing OQE units of output? You take this equilibrium point to the ATC curve and you have determined how much, out, how much will be the average total cost of production and that will be this vertical distance determined by how much output is produced by the firm and what is the average total cost of production. And we can bring this point to the vertical axis. And let us just do this. So here we have this average total cost point. And let me just place it where I want it to be there. So here you can see. And let us call this point on the vertical axis F. So what is average total cost of production? ATC equals OF. How much output is produced by the firm? We know it is OQE. So what will be the total cost of production? It will be average total cost times output produced. And that will be given by the area of the rectangle, what will that be? O, F, B, Q, E. 
This will give us total cost of production. What will be total revenue? Total revenue we know is price times quantity. What is the price charged by the firm? It is OD. What is the output produced by the firm? It is OQE. So what will be total revenue? It will be given by the area of the rectangle. That will be ODCQE. So based on this diagram, we have figured out what will be total cost of production, what will be the total revenue. And the difference between total revenue and total cost gives us total profits. So what will be the total profits earned by this monopolist? It will be the area of this rectangle. And let me just write this down. Total profits total profits will be given by the area of rectangle O it will not be O <clears throat> let me just remove the O part will be area of the rectangle F D C B and this will give us total profits so based on this diagram we have been able to determine equilibrium level of output the price charged by the monopolist and also the total cost associated the total revenue and the total profits made by this monopolist now this gives us the short run equilibrium for the monopolist one thing for you to remember is if a monopolist stays a monopolist in the long run or he is successful in terms of keeping away competition then the same diagram will apply for equilibrium level of output for a monopolist so just remember this as long as a monopolist stays a monopolist in the long run the same diagram will apply for equilibrium level of output and so so this is what we have of this diagram now let us compare the outcomes in the long run under perfect competition with that of monopoly so what i have done in terms of this diagram is you have the long run cost curves in this diagram so lmc and lac the revenue curves stay the same even in the long run and we know how much output will be produced by the monopolist it will be qm how much price will be charged by the monopolist it will be pm now for a firm under perfect competition in the long run what we require is the fulfillment of this condition where all variables are one and the same thing the difference between monopoly and perfect competition is on the revenue side and for revenue side price average revenue and marginal revenue what we have under perfect competition is a horizontal line and where does this happen it happens at the minimum of lac so let me just plot the price line for firm under perfect competition and and we know this must be the equilibrium point for the firm under perfect competition and let us drop this point to the horizontal axis and what we have determined is output produced by a firm under perfect competition so let me just type this out and so you have QPC and on the vertical axis we know what will be the price charged by the firm let's just call it PPC and here you have it and as you can see <clears throat> what we have is output produced by a monopolist is less than output produced by a firm under perfect competition and price charged by a monopolist is greater than price charged by a firm under perfect competition and so this is what we get out of comparison between the two and this concludes our video lecture video thank you for your time